Chris Mikowski of Emerging Civil War, and I'm standing on the banks of the Mississippi near the Grand Gulf Military Park. This is where, on April 29th, Admiral Porter and General Grant conducted an operation against this position because Grant wanted to use this as his river crossing to strike into the Mississippi interior. Uh, but first, of course, he needed to secure it. There were two forts in this area. Fort Coben, which uh, sat above the uh, river bit, and then about uh, three quarters of a mile down the river was Fort Wade. Fort Wade sat right on the river. Just as a point of reference, the historical riverbank was actually eastward another couple hundred yards or so off in that direction. But of course, over time, the river has changed course. Uh, over the course of the bombardment, uh, Porter's going to bring eight uh, gunboats into this fight. Um, they're just going to basically just sail right up to the edge of the shore and blast at point blank range. Uh, Fort Wade being so close is going to be susceptible. The commander, Colonel William Wade, is going to get decapitated uh, in that bombardment and the, uh, the fort will eventually fall silent by 10 in the morning. But uh, Coben will continue to fight on and uh, by 1 o'clock or so in the afternoon, uh, Porter and Grant are going to realize that this probably is not going to work after all and they're going to call off that attack. About 75 Union casualties as a result, uh, to 22 I think uh, Confederate casualties casualties. Um, but really the key here is that Grant does not secure the liver uh, the, the liver landing or the river landing <laughs> that he needs for his uh, upcoming campaign. So he's going to move down to Bruinsburg, which is down river uh, that way, just a few more miles. Once he crosses over to uh, the east bank, he's going to then, of course, make his move on Port Gibson. And uh, once he wins there, that's going to open up his path inward and outflank the forts here and that's going to force the confederates to abandon grand gulf and grant's going to have his opportunity to have this property after all he'll ride in horseback meet with some of porter's staff members porter by that point is to sail down river for another expedition uh, but grant's going to make the fateful decision to uh, move inward and continue this campaign he's under orders to actually move south and help nathaniel banks at port hudson and he's going to decide you know what I've got the initiative, I've got the opportunity, I'm going for it. And he knows it's going to take about eight days for a message to get all the way back to Washington and Henry Halleck and then back. So he's hoping in that time he can achieve something and then ask for forgiveness rather than permission. <laughs> it's uh, really a turning point in the campaign, arguably a turning point in the war, one that's often overlooked because had Grant continued downriver, uh, he was outranked by Banks and Banks would have been in charge. Grant didn't want to have to give up his command. Um, so who knows what might have happened had he followed Halleck's original intent. As it is, he forges inward and from here we'll head up toward eventually Raymond, uh, Jackson, Champion Hill, Big Black River, and Vicksburg and into history. I'm going to hop across the road for just a second to the Grand Gulf Military Park where you can actually visit the remains of Fort Wade. There's an old powder magazine up here and some entrenchments, earthworks down there. There's a supporting battery, so pretty cool to stand in the spot where all this happened. And through the magic of technology, we're going to come up the road just about a mile or so to the remains of Fort Coben, which overlooks uh, the river was that way. And uh, the fort holds out because it's so high above the river. It's got parapets that are about 40 feet deep. We'll go take a look at those in just a second. And uh, so a pretty formidable position uh, here on the, the hillside that the Confederates are able to occupy and keep themselves in the fight, even after Fort Wade gets knocked out relatively soon. Here you can sort of get to see how thick those parapets were. Earthworks always hard to capture on film. We come up here just a little bit onto the top here and look down. We can sort of get a glimpse of one of the channels of the river, although the actual river is kind of behind a tree line pack there. But you can see how this dominates what would have been the river at the time. And of course, this all would have been cleared out so that the Confederates would have had clear fields of fire down to the water too. Standing on the banks of the Mississippi for emerging civil war, I'm Chris Mikowski.